What's up everybody? Welcome back to my intro to programming video series. This is the second video in the series. The last video had us uh, basically setting up Visual Studio, installing it, and getting it ready for use. And in this video we're going to begin programming for the very first time. Um, I'm assuming you guys already have Visual Studio up. Just like I have here you should see this home screen. And let's go ahead and start a new project. Today we're going to make a project called Hello World and this is kind of a tradition in programming. This is usually the first thing people program when they're just starting out. We're going to have a console window, uh, just a black text-based window. It'll come up, it'll say Hello World, and then it will exit. And We're going to program it to say Hello World and to exit basically. So let's get this going. You can create a new project by pressing create new project right here uh, in this section on the main home window but I'm going to use file new project which is the more kind of standard way of making a new project. Um, you should see this new project window come up. On the left Visual C Sharp should be selected. Then over here we're going to make a console app so make sure that's selected. And then uh, down here in the first name, name text box, I'm going to call this Intro to Programming 2 because this is the second video in the series, but you guys can call it whatever you want, whatever makes sense. And then let's press OK. Visual Studio will make the project for us. And here we go. This, this is probably a new scene or a new view for you guys. You've probably never seen this part of Visual Studio before. So let me give you guys a quick rundown. This, uh, this big window right here, this is where you'll spend most of your time. This is where you actually program. This is where you write code. So see, I can type stuff down here. Um, and Visual Studio has already generated some code for us to start with. And then over here to the right, we have the Solution Explorer. And the Solution Explorer basically has every single file we need for our project to work. So you could have assets in here like images or fonts or something like that. Uh, we're just keeping it simple today. We have the program.cs C sharp file. Uh, CS stands for C sharp and that is the code that we're writing over here. It, that's our code file. There's also other things here um, like references to other libraries of code. So whenever you add a, a reference you get access to codes, code that other people have written, so that can be very useful. That's how you can kind of import other people's libraries. Down here we have the properties window, so whenever you click something like program.cs, there's things you can change. Down here in the bottom, we have the error list, and whenever we write something that won't compile or, or won't run, Visual Studio will give us a nice little error down here and usually they're pretty descriptive and they'll say exactly what the problem is or at least point you in the right direction so you can solve the problems. Right here in the code Visual Studio has made a function called main. See the static void main? That is a function and a function I have a little definition here. A function is basically where a bunch of code is stored that goes together to perform a task. So maybe there's a function that computes a bunch of numbers together. Maybe there's a function called add numbers and you would call that function to add a bunch of numbers together and it would return that value. Um, just think for now, we'll, we'll actually use a function here in a second and it'll, it'll probably make a little more sense, but just think of a function as a group of code that was working together to do a specific thing, right? And when we import libraries in the reference thing over here, that is basically giving access to other people's functions. So we call functions in the library. Um, so let's let's go ahead and start working with functions. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's let's start the project and see what it does first. See this play button up here that says start. Let's press that and let's see what it does. So <laughs> that was really fast. Hopefully you saw it. Um, 
But a black console window came up super fast and then immediately exited and went away. That's because we haven't programmed anything in our console window. So that's where our job comes in. We actually have to program this window to work the way we want it to. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and, and display some text to the window. So if you start typing, uh, make sure you start typing in between these curly brackets. Curly brackets basically signify the beginning and the end of functions. So whenever you're writing into a function, they need to, your text needs to be in between those curly brackets. All right. So let's go ahead and type console dot write line, and write line is a function that we're calling on the console. And basically, that's it's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to write a line of text to the console. Um, actually, you can you can pa these parentheses right here. This is usually how you would call a function, right? The parentheses can either have nothing inside them, or you can put some things inside the parentheses. And whenever you make that first open parentheses, you'll see this little window come up, and this is called the IntelliSense. And what the IntelliSense does is show us what we can actually send into this function. So notice there's um, different value types here, bool, char, decimal, double, um, float, int. These are all different da uh, types of data that we can pass in to this function. And I know you don't know what those things are yet. Eventually we'll work with all of them. Um, but just know that you know, we can pass numbers into this function and it can display numbers, or we can just type uh, a string of text, and that's what we'll do now. So whenever you're working with strings of text, you use the quotation marks like I just did there. So let's do a quotation mark and let's say, hello world. Let's put another quotation mark at the end to signify the end of the string. And whenever I say string, string just means text. So we've passed in the text hello world. We've used the close parentheses to end the function call. And then notice at the very end here I have a semicolon. And semicolons are put at the end of every line of code that you write. Basically, semicolons tell Visual Studio, they tell the compiler, that hey, I've written a line of code and this is the end of the line. So semicolons just signify the end of each line of code that you write. So, at this point, if you've written it just like I have here, we can press the start button, the little play button up here again, and let's see what happens. Make sure you're watching, because <laughs> it'll be quick. So, maybe you saw that, maybe you didn't. <laughs> A console window came up, and it did say hello world, but it immediately exited. And that's because we haven't We've written a thing to the we've written some text to the console, but we need to actually wait for some input from the user before we exit the function and exit the application. So we called the function write line to write text to the console. We can also call another function called read line, and this does the opposite of write line. This will read the input from the user. Um, so whatever we type into that window will read that in with this function, right? So because we don't we're not sending anything into this function, it'll, it, it'll we just have an open and closed parentheses, right? We won't pass anything in, but we'll still use that semicolon at the end to let the Visual Studio know that this is the end of this line of code. So basically, we're writing hello world to the console and then we're going to wait for the user to press enter or type something in and read whatever he has typed into the line, right? So let's go ahead and press start. And there we go. We've got hello world displaying to the console. And notice that the little uh, underscore of thing there is blinking. And that's a typical way of saying, hey, we're waiting for input. We're reading the line of text here. And you can type whatever you want or you can type nothing at all. But as soon as you press enter, we'll send this information back um, to the through the read line function, and then it exits. 
So if we wanted to do something with whatever the user typed in, we could save uh, what read line is reading and then use it somehow. Uh, but we won't do that for now. We'll just exit the program and disregard what's been typed into the console. And that's basically it, guys. Uh, good job. Congratulations. Um, imagine fireworks going off because that's your very first program. It's called the Hello World program. And you're now officially on your first step to becoming a programmer. Um, I guess you could actually say you are programmers now. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and do one more thing. Earlier I said that we use, uh, I remember I said strings, we're going to pass in a string of text to this function right here. We basically hard coded this value into the function, right? But there are things called variables, and a string is a type of variable that we can use to store text, right? And the definition of a variable, to be precise, it is a value that we can change any time during our program's life, right? Any time our, programming, our program is running, we can change the value of a variable. And while our program is running, we can use these variables to store data. And this is very useful because a lot of times when you're programming, um, there's certain data that you want to use all throughout the program's life, right? So instead of you know calculating or doing the same thing over and over and over again, you just calculate whatever you want one time and store it into a variable, right? Um, so let's go ahead and use a variable. Let's use a string and store some text in that variable. So I'm going to go to the top here above the lines of code we wrote earlier. And I'm going to create a new variable called text. And text is a string and we're going to immediately assign it to the value hello world. At the end we'll add a semicolon because it's the end of the line. And this thing right here that we just wrote, text, that variable can be used anywhere after we've defined it. right? So if I came down here, notice uh, IntelliSense has text, right? and we could have access to that data. Just think of this stuff as um, variables are basically basically just a way of saving data. Just like you save your game when you play uh, a video game, whenever you're saving data uh, or saving your profile as you play a video game, variables are being used underneath to save that data. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead. We, we've made this variable called text that has the value hello world. Let's go back to this function before we manually typed hello world but now we can erase that and and just pass in our variable text and because text stores um, the words hello world we should get the same exact result as last time let's let's give it a give it a try yep we start the program we get hello world just like last time press enter and it exits. Um, so let's do one more thing. I just want to prove the things I just talked about. Remember I said you, you can change variables anytime during the pro, uh, your program's lifespan. So let's go ahead and change the value of text and then display it to the screen again. So let's press enter and make a few more spaces here after these two console lines right here. And let's say uh, let's say text equals um, let's just, <laughs> I'm just going to say we change the text that was stored in the string. Now the program will close. Goodbye. Okay, so notice that when I first defined the variable up here, I said string text, right? And basically I was saying, okay, string text is a new variable and it is a string data type. So when it's string, that means we store text, right? But when we're down here, we're just reusing that variable that we made from earlier. So we don't need to put the word string before it because we already know it's a string because we typed it, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, 
after we've set text to have a new value let's go ahead and call console.writeLine and we're just going to basically do the same thing we just wrote up there we're going to pass text and then we're going to read the line one more time wait for input from the user and then the function will exit making the program exit so let's go ahead and press start alright hello world press enter we changed the text that was stored in the string now the program will close goodbye so hopefully you see what we're doing here right we passed in text to the right line function two times um, but we changed the data that was inside of the text variable so different results went up to the screen and basically that's going to be the end of this video um, we, we've learned a couple new things we've learned about functions and we've learned about variables and we've basically programmed our very first application and learned a little bit about Visual Studio too. I, I showed you guys a little bit of the layout. You know, we have the Solution Explorer on the right side and the error list down there. Yeah, you know, and I, I'd say that that's a good stopping point. So I, I hope you guys found this video useful, and I'll see you again on video three. Peace out.